start recording. And yeah, we're recording. So welcome, guys. Welcome to the first episode of the Cloudy Days Calm Nights podcast with me, your host, Lethal Coils, and my co-host, and he's not there. I'm right here, brother. I was waiting for you to introduce <laughs> you. Yeah, I was talking I'm Matt, to you, bro. I'm Matt Sinister. I get an intro. <laughs> I get an intro. <laughs> <laughs> I will power bomb the narrator. Just Wouldn't that. be the first time. It would not be the first time, brother. <laughs> I've had to power bomb a few people who've gotten out of line over the years. <laughs> well, let's hope I don't uh, end up on that line. Um, so you, you have the security of being on the other side of the country. <laughs> do, do you know what? That is true. You'd have to be like Stretch Armstrong to power bomb me from where you are. Or, or I'd have uh, the, the speed force, and I can just, you know, get there in a few seconds and power bomb oh, you and get, go back. And you wouldn't even know what the hell hit you. Yeah. Like Superman fly like a bullet. <laughs> just, yeah. Boom, I'm there. What now? Bomb and I'm gone. Bomb, uh, gone, <laughs> done. <laughs> so this is the uh, the Cloudy Days Calm Nights podcast. Uh, just as an intro to the show, this is where we're going to be talking about a variety of many different topics. Uh, we'll have a couple of different topics each week. And uh, we'll be discussing some of those. Um, and we hope that you enjoy the, the show. This is going to be a very relaxed kind of environment. So uh, it's just going to be a lot of talk. And we're, we're going to see where the, the conversation takes us, whether it's power bombing Mr. Rogers or, you know, banana milkshakes. I don't know. Something. It'll be something. Uh, could go to blowing mud. You never know. Oh, blowing mud. That's a topic we could discuss. That's a, definitely maybe something. On, maybe on another another episode. Maybe we, we don't want to start the initial yeah. episode. <laughs> we don't want to scare people away off the first episode. Talk, <laughs> literally, we have shit to talk about. <laughs> oh Jesus! Let's talk bowel movements. No, I'm kidding. Let's not. Um, Let's not. So Matt, this is uh, kind of big for us. This is our first episode here uh, for the the mm -hmm. podcast. Um, what's been going on with you this week? I know you said you're having some problems today. Uh, well, not really problems. It just uh, we got a notice uh, last week that the power was going to be off today between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. So uh, it went off at 8.30 this morning. And uh, I was just, you know, I made sure all my devices were powered in fully. And I just been chilling out, uh, watching YouTube, uh, watching TikTok, watching, uh, going through Instagram. Did my throwdown Thursday, um, and other than that, uh, um, yeah. The one thing that sucks though is I'm on this uh, intermittent fasting, All so right. uh, I can only eat between noon and 8 p.m. So I literally ran to the store, or went inside, went to the deli, and uh, grabbed something. Some some chicken and grabbed a bag of munchos not the healthiest uh uh i love first munchos, meal of man. the day oh munchos are great but it's cheap and affordable and uh because i'm st i get i get my check tomorrow mm. so I, I i'm like really sailing on the edge right here yeah you know um it's great, and i got I some water pants, yeah. yeah and uh i'm used to uh doing things in my car uh Back in my wrestling days, I drived everywhere. I didn't fly. I drove everywhere. And uh, so I got, uh, you know, everything hooked up. And I'm ready to do this first podcast with you, brother. Awesome. Dude, I'm excited. This is, a, this is actually a new undertaking for me. Um, I've never done podcasting before. Uh, everybody that is probably listening to this already knows me through uh, YouTube. Um Obviously, that's where we are right now. We're posting this on YouTube. Um, that That's future me talking. Um, you guys will catch it on YouTube uh, after we're done here. But most people that are going to be listening right now already know me from YouTube or from the community itself as being uh, somebody on YouTube. Uh, but a podcast is something different that I've thought about but never actually pursued. So I'm actually pretty excited for this. I, I hope this goes well. Um, I have 
high hopes and and I have faith that this will be a good show. Well, so do I, especially because I'm involved. Absolutely, Matt Sinister. Matt Sinister, powerbomb champion gotta, of the gotta, world. Gotta give you a little of my heel persona here, brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it wouldn't happen. be any. It wouldn't be any fun if I was just a straight, straight lace baby face. Just, <laughs> hey, it adds uh, character, brother. Adds character. Um, so yeah, that's what's up with you this week. What's been going on with me this week? Still adjusting to the new move. Um, some of you guys might know. I know, Matt, I've talked uh, with you in the room before about it, but we did that whole uh, bedroom exchange kind of thing going mm -hmm. on here at the house, and we're still kind of adjusting to it. Um, for 15 years, the 15 years that I've been up here, um, this room that we're in now has always been my mother-in-law's room, so it's really weird to kind of get used to that fact of now it's our room. Um, you don't but, have a rocking chair by the window, do you? Actually, we do have a rocking chair. Right <laughs> Some Norman Bates <laughs> shit going on right That's here. Like, it, it's crazy that you mentioned that, but yeah, we actually do have a rocking chair in front of a window um, on top of many other pieces of furniture that need to find homes. Um, that's the other thing that's been stressing. Like, I haven't had... Uh, I haven't been able to get all of this stuff unpacked that I want to get unpacked and get all of this furniture moved to where it's going to be to a permanent location or semi-permanent location um, and cleaned up the clutter because like I'm a I'm a huge like neat freak when it comes to that kind of stuff um, like first thing in the morning I have to make the bed it has to look nice if it doesn't look nice I'm not happy with it and my day's going to go wrong <laughs> so uh, but that's what I've been doing this week. Like a lot of um, coil building for orders, a lot of cleaning around the house. Um, and the biggest stressor here has been trying to hunt down a used vehicle uh, for an affordable cost. So it's been a little bit, been a little rough here at the house uh, over the past week and a half or two weeks now. Um, rough, but not do, but not undoable. Right, exactly, exactly. We can adapt and we can move on. Um, we'll overcome these challenges that we're facing right now. Uh, I have faith in that, and um, you know, my my wife does a bang up job of of covering her ass at every corner and making sure that everything is golden. Uh, so she does a uh, an amazing job of that. She helps keep us in line and keep everything working like it uh, should. So. Well, that's what significant others do, you know, even though when they're wrong, they still cover their ass. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and that can sometimes come back to bite me in the ass when she has an argument with me. She's like, no, no, I've got it right here in writing. You told me this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Yeah, I, I screenshotted your text from two years ago. <laughs> right. <told me. laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, so I did have a topic that I wanted to discuss, throw up to... Uh, you, uh, Matt, I wanted to talk a little bit about, and this is something that I don't think gets talked about hardly at all ever, um, but things, we all try to impress people. We all want to impress people. That's just something, you know, human nature. But there are things that some people do that do exactly the opposite of impress and kind of disinterest people from even beginning to get to know you. Um, so I wanted to go over a list of the things that you should not do to try to impress someone. Oh, I, I've, I've done a few things that didn't impress very, very many people. Yep. I did it anyway because I didn't care and I was doing it for my own amusement. Right. But uh, before we go down that road, Chris, uh, what are you vaping on, brother? Oh, you're absolutely correct, sir. Uh, I didn't even think about that. What I'm vaping on, I've got the uh, Warlocks Hammer Dual 21700 Parallel Box Mod with the uh, Apocalypse Gen 2 in very nice blue colors. And in that, I've got some Mitch Hogat's Just a Dream from Hogat's Yogat's. Uh, loving, loving an orange creamsicle. I really do. Uh, next up, we've got the Beast from the East, the Laugh Now, Cry Later Custom Mod. 4S LiPo DNA 250C with the Steam Crave Titan on top of there. And in that, we have some more Hogan's Yogurts. We've got the Mixed Berry Lemonade. 
What are you vaping on there, Mr. Sinister? Well, being that I'm mobile right now, I don't have as much as I normally do. Usually I got about anywhere from five to 13 setups uh, sitting around. I've tried to downgrade. I've tried to ground, downgrade. And I always wind up either getting a new liquid or, uh, you know, I find a pair of uh, coils and I'm like, you know what? I got to use these coils. Right. You know, whatever, whatever it may be. Or I just want to build. I just want to put something together. You know, yep. you know, I got a huge collection because... You know, like yourself and uh, many other hobbyist vapors out there, we go down that rabbit hole when we first get into this thinking we need to buy everything. Right. So, um, but uh, I did bring an, uh, a few, uh, an extra thing with me. Uh, this normally doesn't go with me on the road, but I got the uh, Reload 26 um, on top of the UL Soul Keeper. Which I, you know, it's not, it's a, it's a regulated, it's not really a mech, you know, it looks like a mech, um, but I enjoy it. The Reload 26 is my favorite by far RTA of all time, and uh, it's got some uh, Omboy OC's mango inside it, which is one of the best e-liquids. You talk to any hobbyist vapors, they're going to tell yeah. you just how good Omboy OC's mango is. Yep. But uh I brought that with me because I knew I, uh, you know, I was going to be doing this, and uh, but normally when uh, I'm just on the road, I just take a simple sub ohm tank with me. Um, I got uh, the UL uh, or Ninchaku two. Um, I got that on top of the Aegis Max, um, which is one of my favorite mods, which I have a uh, uh, the the symbol from the Flash uh, on it. Which is done by Custom Aegis Skins. Yep. Our uh, our buddy Jay out in the uh, Netherlands. Um, inside it, I got some Tango Melon, uh, which is another amazing e-liquid. I like sweet e-liquids. Me too. Yeah. Uh, and also, just because uh, uh, Omboy OC Dwayne, uh, he uh, sent me uh, a bunch of his e a bunch of his e-liquids. Um, but he sent them all to me in six milligram and I wow. only vape three. So I grabbed, uh, I have, I don't have many pods at home. So I grabbed the, uh, the, the smock Nord and put the six milligram rocket blast in there and it's working like a charm. Wow. In a, in a, in a, uh, in a pod, I tried it in tanks and drippers and no, uh, it just gives me too much throat with that six milligram. Right. So that's all I got with me now. Um, like I said, at home, I probably got another four or five setups sitting on my desk. I hear you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's buffets. Let's roll back into that, uh, that topic for a few minutes here and, uh, talk about some things not to do to try and impress someone. Um, I have a list of my own. Uh, first thing I'm going to talk about is embellish and i've i've had this happen to me before so uh embellishing stories to get others to like you uh i've had a, yes. a couple of people that have wanted to you know i don't want to say the use the term one up people uh but i have had that happen too um but just trying to build yourself up into a m more interesting person than you might feel you know yeah uh i know all about embellished stories because i grew up with a father who passed away this past november as you know chris yep um which was very devastating to me at, at, towards the end you know in the last five ten years of our relationship we became very close um we became friends we finally you know where a father and son can finally become friends right and uh you know we could call each other up for no reason and just talk about nothing you know, right. and uh, but he was a big storyteller. Yeah. And there were there were some cases that he did embellish on the story because it made the story better. Mm -hmm. But in a lot of cases, he told he embellished or just flat out made up things because he was trying to impress people. Right. And, you know, and so I grew up with a lot of that in the professional wrestling industry. There is a lot no, of embellishment God. because amongst wrestlers, they're just going, hey, we're working, man. We're working. 
We're yeah. just working everybody. That's what was part of the show, which there's some truth to that, but not in uh, during a private conversation in the locker room. Right. So I, I've heard everything from, you know, my, my, my family's, you know, I've had Lucha wrestlers tell me that, you know, they're somehow uh, connected to the Mexican mob. Oh, gee. You know, I've, I've heard, uh, you know, we won't go into detail, but I've heard, you know, I slept with her, I slept with her, I slept with her. Yeah. Sure. Okay. No yep. problem. Sure, buddy. <laughs> but uh, sure in most cases, the way I handle things like that is I just listen to it, laugh about it, and then move on. Because right. what are you going to do? Are you going to call everyone out on their bullshit? No, nope. uh, I certainly I've done that a few times in my life, but uh, and I look, I'm not above uh, embellishing a story here and there to make it sound funnier because, you know, I also used to do stand up comedy. So that's what you do, you know, when you're telling a story. Right. But uh, I've never just made up a story. And I've certainly never said anything to anyone to try to impress them. No. Uh, never, never just told a story. Here, I'm going to tell this complete BS story because I want this person to like me. Yeah. That's never been me. I, but I know a lot of people that have done it. I did. Uh, I did it a, a cuff, few times when I was much younger. Um, before I fully accepted who I was and, to, you know, to kind of be happy with that. Um, when I was younger, I did do that. But nowadays, it's like, especially if you've done it before, it's easy to see it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, I, I've had a couple of people try to impress me that way. And, um, it, in fact, it, like I said, it does pretty much exactly the opposite. It kind of pushes you away from them um, if they catch on to it, you know. So, yeah. I, I stopped doing that. It's not, it's not worth the hassle. And if people don't like you for who you are, then they're not worth it anyways. To me, in my opinion. No, they're not. You know, and I fully agree with that with that uh, opinion, because you know, and that's the one thing. The one of the things that's cool about getting older, physically, it sucks, mm -hmm. especially when you used to be an athlete and you used to do all kinds of crazy things. Uh, you pay for that as you get older, but mentally, uh, you start to realize, like when you used to stress over things, mm -hmm. you used to worry about things. You don't, you don't really need to do that. And you, you've lived, you've learned. Right. You know, it's like the. It's like, the, you know, there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. You gain that wisdom as you get older from your experience, from the knowledge you gain from your experiences. So if you're going to just start telling stories for the sake of trying to impress, I don't care who I impress. Right. I've gone, you know, first of all, I was the, I was the heel, you know, that's the term, uh, but bad guy wrestler, majority of my wrestling career. And I was never trying to impress anybody. I was trying to piss everyone off. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was quite good at it, actually. But um, <laughs> I uh, never uh, wanted to uh, uh, just for the sake of I want to be liked. I want to. There's plenty of times that I don't want to be liked. In fact, I want to be left the hell alone. Yeah. You know, I've always been a bit of a loner. Um, I've always just kind of liked doing my own thing. You know, I'll tell stories. I'll meet people. Uh, but uh, and I'll talk about things, but never to just try to. Hey, look at me. Look look how cool I am, brother. Right. No, none of that. Absolutely. No. You know, and I get that, you know, sharing stories is one thing, but you know, sharing stories and being like, you know, okay, so I caught for me, like say I caught a 4-pound fish. Oh yeah, I caught a 6 and a half pounder. You know, it was this yeah, big there you go. and No, 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 no. No. I try to be as uh legit as I can about everything. So but um, that's one of my uh, my thoughts. Do you have a, a point that you could bring up of something you shouldn't do? I, I have I have a few things that you shouldn't do. Uh, one is never try to take on something that you know someone else likes, mm. but you really don't like it. But you're pretending to because you you want to you want to be friends with that person. Right. You know. You want something. Like I'll give you a, a, a great example. Uh, you know, in and you know, in the vape stew, we're always playing uh, um, Nintendo Switch, right. right, or some kind of video game. Now, I got a Nintendo Switch 
and I got Mario Kart because I love all the Super Mario Brothers stuff. You know, since, since I had the original Nintendo, I had yeah. ColecoVision when I was a kid. <laughs> That's how far back I go. And um, I was different from everyone. Everyone else in the neighborhood had Atari. I had ColecoVision. So, uh, um, but another, another popular game in there is Pokemon. Yep. I am not on any stretch of the imagination. I will power bomb myself before I do this. Will not download Pokemon. I have no interest in Pokemon. I never understood Pokemon. Uh, and you don't care to. <laughs> and I don't care. I, you know, you know, uh, I get it's it. like, I'm not just going to play a video game that I, I have no interest in just for the sake of, ha of being able to be cool with my friends. Cause I don't think it's cool. Yeah. See, I, I was into Pokemon for a long time, but it kind of got to the point where like, I realized that it was a lot like world of Warcraft for me, where it just got to be such a time sink and you, all you're doing is running around catching these imaginary animals yeah. and wasting your time. <laughs> you know, that's, that's pretty much all it is. It's just a huge waste of time. But I mean, I guess that argument could be made for any video game, to be honest. But I got another one, too. Yeah, go for it. Um, this, was a, this is a kind of a controversy in the news right now. Um, and this is this maybe this is kind of a California thing. I mean, it's a Florida thing too because they have it out in Florida. Yep. But it's really a California thing. Annual, uh, you know, Disneyland passes. Mm. They've recently uh, Disneyland announced that they're no longer going to have, you know, their passes where you pay a monthly fee or a yearly fee or whatever, and you can go to Disneyland whenever the hell you want. Mm. Um, I think they're largely doing it because of COVID because. Uh, so many people have those passes and they go so often that the, the park is right. just jammed all the time. But uh, I remember when uh, there was going to be a price hike on the passes, a big price hike. And I, I joked around on, on uh, social media. I said, I don't, ca I don't care about the price of a Disneyland pass because I'm a grown man. Right. And I was just saying that, like, if you have a Disneyland, I'm not, I'm not knocking you. And if certainly if you have kids... And you're taking your kids to Disneyland, by all means. Right. But I am not. I've not been the kind of person. Yeah, I want to go to Disneyland now since they put the Star Wars thing in because I want to check that out. Mm -hmm. But you're never going to catch me going to Disneyland on a regular basis, taking my photo with the characters. Right. You know. You know. None of that. And I'm not knocking anyone for doing that. I'm just saying I know there's plenty of people that will get a Disneyland pass. Because they want to hang out with people that all also have a Disneyland right. pass. And the reality is they're there, they're miserable, they're going, this stuff is stupid, you know. Yep. I, you know Don't spend so, copious amounts of money just to be liked yeah. by someone else. Yeah. Yeah. I've never done that with vaping either. I've never bought, like, heard, like, three or four guys guys were buying an Addy, and they're just, oh, my God, this Addy's so amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let me look it up. Let me. I'm not just going to go based on one person's word. Or a couple of people's word. Let me look it up. Let me watch some reviews. Yeah. Let me see if it's actually, any good. I'm that, just going to go, hey, I got one too. I got one too. Yeah. And you that know? actually rolls into, you know, one one of, that goes hand in hand with one of my uh, bullet points on my list here is that, you know, don't buy things for other people either. Just, you know, you can't buy friendship. Um, no. And I, I've had people do that. You know, I've had people buy me something and then feel so proud that they you know contributed that they brag about it to everybody you know um oh. i i've had somebody do that and it became a problem but i've i've seen seen that too many times you know what i mean so don't don't try and buy friendship it just doesn't work people see through that no. shit too yeah a real friend, like if you're trying to spend money on them mm -hmm. and they know you don't have a lot of money, what's right. the thing go, dude, I got it. Don't worry about it. You know, right. They'll, they'll hone that in and go, look, you don't need to be spending all your money on me. You know, I could pay for my own stuff. Right. It's not a problem. I'm enjoying hanging out with you. But if you're just like, Hey, uh, let me buy you this. Let me buy you that. Let me buy you. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly it. You know, it's, um, I guess it's the intent behind it and 
the way you treat it after the fact, I suppose. Like, if you're doing something nice for someone to, to send them a gift or to say thank you for something, anything, that's one thing. You know, I can appreciate that. But when your intent and your actions after the, the reception of whatever you sent to that person, whatever you purchased for that person, how you act afterwards, you know, is what's most important. Um, I think that's, like I said, when I had that issue um, where... It's almost stalkerish when you think about it. It's almost what? Stalkerish. Yeah. When somebody it, buys you something and then they just seem to be like constantly hanging around. Hey, I bought you this. Remember this? Hey, I'll get yes. this for you. Exactly like, that. Exactly that. And it, it did become an issue and it was kind of stalkerish. Um, so, you know, it's that's why I, I wrote up that that point as well was don't, you know, try and buy friendship. Don't buy people things just to get on their good side or, or gain their yeah. you know, attention. attention uh, that's yeah. not a good thing. Definitely not. Not at all. Um, another one I have, uh, actually that one uh, kind of goes along with what I just said as well uh, about bragging anyways. Don't brag about what you have. And it goes together with another one uh, that I've written down. Don't belittle someone for what they don't. No. You know no, what I if mean? Anything, if anything, if somebody doesn't have something and you want them to have it, see, you don't give things so you can get something in return. You give because you, you do because you want to do. You give because you want to give. Mm -hmm. You know, like I hate watching video. Like if you really wanted to help homeless people, you would go out and just help them. You wouldn't videotape it or, you know, so is how old I am, videotape. You wouldn't <laughs> record it. <laughs> and uh, you wouldn't TiVo it. Uh, um, no. You get, uh, you yeah, know, but you see this all the time. And, you know, I think their heart is uh, times in the right place, but they're broadcasting this on social media yeah. because they want the likes, they want the subscribes, you know. And a lot of times, too, they'll even offer uh, a giveaway if you go out and and give something to the homeless. Right. Or, you know, if you donate blood or something, here, do this. You know, that's why, you know, I, you know, I don't talk a lot about uh, the things that I do. I've done for charity. Right. Um, and when I do donate to charity, I do it anonymously. And I always tell them, look, I don't need a blanket. I don't need a T-shirt. I don't need a calendar. Because uh, if I if I. Uh, Say you, you give twenty five dollars to some something, and mm -hmm. then they send you a T shirt. I just bought a T shirt. Yeah, you know because somebody has to pay for that. That has to that you know there are production costs. Right. So uh, I would rather just not have the T shirt or whatever little gimmick they want to give me. Yeah. And I'd rather just give the money, and I don't need to put my name out there. Uh, right. Yeah. Look what I did. Look what I did. Yeah. Look what you did. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Right. That's... Yeah, those people you want to go. That's, that's those are people that I personally would like to go. Come here, come here. Whoosh. Yep. Slap them right in the mouth, because all they're doing is they're doing it for bragging rights. They're doing it for, uh, you know, not they're not doing it for what the real cause is, and that's to help. Exactly, and that's that's the big point. And that's something that I've said the like for a while now is that people lose sight of that. People lose sight of the fact that it's just someone wanting to help, you know? Yeah. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that you know, at all. I've, I've had, uh, I've had uh, you know, on Christmas Eve where I've gone to, you know, uh, and gotten something to eat from probably like Del Taco because it's the only thing that's open. Hmm. Um, you know, or, uh, you know, Jack in the Box or something. And I'll see a homeless guy sitting on the curb and I've, you know, bought an extra meal and walked over and dropped it off and just drove away. I didn't get my phone out and, you know, start uh, recording so I could do do an Instagram uh, video. And, exactly. And pat myself on the back. In fact, I rarely even talk about it. I've, you are probably, and now I guess, you know, it's, it's going to be out there with the podcast, but uh, I could count on one hand how many people I've told about uh, charitable things I've done. Right. Because I don't, I it's just I don't do it advertise for the sake it. of don't doing it. Don't broadcast it. No, no, no need to. Not at all. 
That's not why we do it. We we don't do it for selfish reasons. We do it to help other people, not you know because we want recognition yeah. for our achievements or what we consider achievements. You know, I I, mean, I understand I don't when see, it's on a. I don't see something like that as. I don't know. It's it's a big thing it's tacky. to donate to charity, but it's yeah, it's tacky. It it's is. Just, you, you're not doing it for the right reasons. Exactly. You know, that's what it comes um, down to. You know, it's uh, yeah. it, it's not there for an ego boost. You know, and that's what a lot of people use it for. So, but I'm very much the same way as you, uh, Matt. When and I. It, for me, it's because I've been in this position before. Um, for quite a long time, I was homeless and had nothing. I was living on the streets, and I know what it's like to be in that position. So mm -hmm. for me, I do it for that reason, but I do. Uh, if I see a homeless vet or if I see anybody that's homeless uh, and suffering and I have the ability to help them out, no, I won't give them cash because I don't know if they're going to spend that on alcohol or drugs. But I yeah. will go like you did, and I'll you know buy them some food and a drink or something, um, mm -hmm. you know, and and I'll drop that off with them. Something to you know, you never know. That kind of an action could just turn their entire day around. You know, that mm -hmm. could change their entire way of thinking. You know, for the day or for however give long them it hope. lasts. What's that? Give the, give them a little hope. You yeah. Know? Wow, you know they—they're already feeling like nothing, like a nobody, mm -hmm. like a loser. You know, like they've been forgotten by the world. Yeah, they've been forgotten by the world. Yeah, exactly. And then you know, one person comes up and say, and just puts some food down and says, or gives them a blanket or or something, mm -hmm. and and they're just like, wow, you know. And uh, it, it sometimes it's hard because you don't know who's actually out there scamming you. Right. Because you even got those people with you know work for food signs and. Mm -hmm. Or you're sitting out there with a cup in their hand, you know, disabled vet, uh, got divorced, uh, uh, wife took everything, left me on the streets. Um, and it turns out, you know, they got a, uh, a, a Lexus parked down the street. Oh, shit. You know, they live, in a, they live in a four bedroom house. This is what they do to make money. Yeah. And in some cases, they make a lot of money doing it. I know you see it in the inner cities a lot, but uh, something that we just saw a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week ago was uh, out in a, a town not too far away from here called Lawrence. Um, there was actually a, a guy sitting on the sidewalk with these buckets and tins and pots and pans and everything just doing the whole inner city drum thing and uh, just making these sick beats and everything with just these buckets and these pieces of metal and uh, doing what he could do to try and, you know, make something happen for you know future mm -hmm. food or or something for him or his family or whoever he has to support um you know and and it's hard seeing people on times like that you know i know that times are yeah. really hard for myself as well but even still as hard as times are for myself i'll still gladly help out if i have the the ability to do so um yeah you know, it's just kind of the person I am. I've, I've got a love for humanity, and sadly, I'm not impressed with the, the state of society as it is. Uh, in, in well, if uh, anything that we learned from this election, <laughs> is well, uh, yeah, you know, there's some people there. There are just some people that are just really deplorable. We're a very divided base. country. We really are in a, a lot of different ways, not just politically where we're a lot of it's bipartisan. A lot of it's either Republican versus Democrat. Um, but there's also like so many other things that people in the United States are divided on that cause tension between others. You know, like people are divided on, you know, vaping versus smoking. Uh, people are divided on, yeah, politics. Uh, people are divided on racism it there's religion religion everything and it's just so much stuff that causes all this tension and conflict between people that humanity and and care for one's neighbor has gone out the window and yeah i kind of attribute a lot of the way i think to how i was raised in you know a, a christian home 
but I do. I have a, a big love for humanity as a whole, and I, I think that we need to care about others, not just ourselves. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, I certainly think we need to uh, start, you know, I think one of the things about the pandemic that is shown is that there are plenty of things we can go without yeah that we don't need and there's also other different ways of doing things you know mm -hmm. and when you get down to it uh okay we've discovered you know because of the pandemic and because of quarantines that okay we we need these things we don't need these things but we are still spending money on the things that we don't need why don't we take some of that money not all of it there, we doesn't mean we have to just live you know in uh you know a society where only what you need only what you need eat to right. live only what you need you don't have to do this you don't have to live no you make a good living but yeah live. if you make a good living you have a right you earned it yeah to go out and go out to dinner and uh buy a nice car you know that that's that's fine but uh th but there are so many things that uh, as a society as a whole that we've learned that we don't need why don't we stop spending so much of the money that we spend on those things and start giving some of that money to help stimulate the economy, stimulate families, stimulate businesses. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there are three, oh, there are like what, 316 million people in the United States. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And yet the, and there's like $54 trillion dollars, uh, of of uh, money throughout the United States, yet majority of that is owned by one percent of people. Jeez. So, so you think about that. Is that really? That's not. That's look. There's always going to be corporations. Capitalism is not a bad thing. No. Uh, you know, communism. It's like you look at it. Uh, Bill Maher had a great uh, analogy. He said uh, communism makes the river flow the opposite way, and you can't have that. So you want the river to flow the right way with capitalism, but you have to have certain locks and dams in that river to keep things in check. Because if it just constantly flows, it's a free for all. It's chaos, yeah. And only the only the uh, where they say only the strong survive. It's really only the filthy rich survive. Yeah, and that's kind of the way I see it right now. Anyways, is you know just in general that those with money come out on top. Those without get left behind. You know, it's. Yeah, we get kind of get forgotten in the dust, um, and we we matter the least. When I feel like it should be the other way around. Obviously, the rich are well enough off to take care of themselves, but yet we're the ones suffering. You know, instead of having their attention on us. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I I make a pretty good living. Uh, you know, I work I work you know my ass off for it, but I make you know make good money i have a nice car i have a house you know uh and uh but i'm still you know i don't make you know i don't make kiss my ass money right you know so i still have to mind my p's and q's and in uh certain situations and i also have to uh keep in mind that you know I, even though I, I my paycheck's nice i'm still two or three paychecks away from if that disappears, my whole life is turned upside down. Right. You know, so ever that, you know, it, it, it doesn't have so much to do with living above your means, which I know a lot of people do. And in the society we live in, sometimes that's unavoidable. You have to live on a system of credit. Right. But uh, especially here in California, I mean, there's other parts of the United States. Sure, you can, you know, cash your paycheck, pay, you know. But uh, when uh, you 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 have this type of mortgage, you have a kind of a car payment, you know, uh, you know. I tell everybody, well, they say you can't afford a car. You take the bus, all right. You ever been on a bus? You take the bus, all right. <laughs> Shit is dirty. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's dirty. It's nasty. It's some you know. You never know who licked the, the bus, windows. You know. Yeah. So um, don't. Uh, here's another thing for the topic we're on. Um, agreeing with someone because you want to be that person's friend and you want that person to notice you yep. when deep down you don't agree with that at all no no 
Yeah, and it'll there's come a lot out. of that that goes on. It'll come out a lot too, of, eventually. It comes out. A lot of sheeple, as like they call them. A lot of sheeple. Yeah. That just, just bah, they just go with the flow, even <laughs> though they know what they're doing is wrong. But yep. they want to be part of this organization. They want to be part of this group. They want to be part of this clique. Yep. So, uh, uh, I think at the end of the day, just let me power bomb whoever the hell I want to power bomb. And <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 I want to kind of, I kind of want to be like Randall Tex Cobb in uh, Raising Arizona. You ever see that mm-hmm. movie? You know, no. Big. He's a. He's just a filthy biker. He's got two shotguns on the back, of his, oh, like like katana swords on their shotguns, you know. And uh, it's a funny movie. His character is great, but yeah, I just want to go around and uh, and you know, I got a list of, of things that people did that they weren't supposed to do. I go, you know what? You're getting power bombed. Yep. End of story. We'll start, You're we'll, just we'll, getting power bombed. We'll start bombed. here in California. We're going to start with Gavin Newsom. But uh, uh, full disclosure, I'm not actually going to. Power bomb Gavin Newsom. I don't need <laughs> Secret Service or, or you know the governor's security knocking on my door, going, "You go to power bomb Gavin Newsom." Mm-hmm. Um, Only if he lets me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If he lets me, yeah, sure. <laughs> but if I he signs I, a know, waiver. <laughs> yeah. Here, can you sign this for me, please? <laughs> sure. What am I? Yeah, it means I can't get in any trouble. I can't be held liable for Although, any injuries you I, incur. I, I I think that someone like Cuomo or Bloomberg would be worth the jail time now. <laughs> what uh, you are you know, gonna do? But so what? What are you gonna do? You're gonna put me? Yeah, but so what? Uh, will I go to jail for power bombing uh, Andrew Cuomo? Technically, yes. But, but so, so what? what? <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Put me in a prison cell with a bunch of guys who treat me like a hero, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then when I get out, I'm not going to be in jail forever. And when I get out, I'll never have to buy another vape liquid or another e liquid, another device ever. I'll be set for because everyone will be so thankful of what I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, you need this? Uh, you need this four hundred dollar Mac here? It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> We have a. a hey, I, I, I fantasize. I fantasize. Hey, we all have to have that fantasy, man. Life would be too boring without it. Yeah, I. I uh, one thing that I think is lost on today's generation is um, imagination. Imagining, imagination, because everything is so. We're all plugged into something. Yep. The devices, games, all these type of things. Daydreaming is gone. I still yep. daydream. Me too. I still have a fantasy life that I've never told anyone about, mm. and I never will. It's just something that I think about, and uh, you know, it's had a chronological timeline from the time I was, you know, from the time I was a teenager to um, till now, and um, I think that's very healthy for the the brain, yeah, and for the body to be able just to to fantasize, to imagine, and there's also things like. I always dreamed when I was a kid, I dreamed about becoming a wrestler. Yeah. And uh, I accomplished that dream. I didn't make it to the top of the mountain. Right. But (laughs) I uh, lived, I got to do something that I always said I wanted to do. Not a lot of people can say that. No, they can't. A lot of people can't say that they achieved their childhood dreams. Um, I can say that I didn't. Uh, I also, though, in my defense, didn't have any clue what I wanted to do, you know, when I grew older. Um, Maybe that's why I'm in the position I'm in now. But I, you know, didn't have any aspirations. I wanted to be a rock star. But then again, what, you know, what boy did, you know? Yeah. Um, But, you know, there was so many things that I could have chosen and uh, I just, I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. So for me, it was an impossible task to achieve a childhood dream to start with, but not many people can say that they even get the chance to get close to achieving their their childhood dreams. And you've done that. Yeah, and it wasn't easy. No. It takes when I was 18 work. years old, when I was 18 years old, I, uh, you know, I, I started uh, calling uh people in Canada 
uh, to go and uh, go up there and train with the Hart family. Hart family's a you know Bret, Bret Hart is Bret Hart is the most well known Bret and of the Hart family. Uh, was it Michael? Brett Michaels? No, not Brett. Not no, Brett, Michaels, Brett no. Hart. Brett and uh, Brett Michaels is from Poison. <laughs> who was the other Hart brother that? Brett No. Brett No. Brett No. And Hart. Owen. Owen. Oh, that yeah, was the yeah. one. Owen and, was the one that, and that Owen, passed away. Yeah, from and he the died. Accident. Yeah, he died tragically in the accident. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I had known Owen uh, when I was up in Canada. Oh. Uh, great, great dude. Great dude. Actually, pretty quiet. Was but, he? But uh, always, oh, but it was great river. I always liked to pull pranks and. <laughs> things like that but anyway i went up there i i got into you know my i got into my truck uh toyota tacoma and i left california hardly ever being anywhere else in the united states other than a few few places uh for family vacations or things like that right um and i drove uh to calgary alberta canada you know almost died on black ice because i had never experienced black ice before. oh jeez. My car did a complete 360 and went into a ditch, but I was fine. There was no damage. I just drove out of the ditch. Um, you know, experiencing weather that I had never in my life experienced. You know, I thought I knew cold, and then I, I got to Canada, and it's 40 below. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. But I went up there for three months, and, uh, you know, it was a... You know, it was a culture, you know, it was, I wouldn't say it was so much of a culture shock. I did laugh at Canadians who bitched about sitting in traffic for 10 <laughs> minutes. Uh, 10 minutes, huh? 10 whole minutes, really? Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, 18 years old, you know, yeah. I was just a kid. And I was up there for three months. And then I, I would drive all over the West Coast, uh, West Coast, Mexico. And, you know, I worked a lot of uh, uh, Mexican uh, Lucha Libre shows where I didn't speak Spanish. <laughs> and it was, it was, you know, weird communications. There were times I did not get paid. Ooh. You know, I didn't get paid. And when you're talking pay, you're talking anywhere from from uh, 25 to $50. Okay. You know, yeah. it wasn't toward till, till a bit later on that I was able to... Uh, uh, I was getting paid a little bit more, not much more, but a little bit more. But I was also able to get work in Hollywood, right. doing uh, doing stunt work and uh, you know through my connections in wrestling. Um, so you and I made good money doing that. You make money working in Hollywood, right? If you can get the work. But yeah, no, it wasn't easy. It it was a lot of hard work and it was a lot of wear and tear on my body. And uh, when I look back at it, uh, I don't think I worked hard enough. No, you know, I think I worked hard, but it wasn't enough. Mm. And because I didn't become, you know, I didn't become John Cena. I didn't become Stone Cold Steve Austin. I didn't become, those are guys who busted their ass. Right. Who starved to death, living in their cars. You know, I always had an apartment. I always had a, jo a job during the week, you know, because I was afraid not to. Yeah. I can believe it. So, um, yeah, back to the topic. I have a couple other ones. Actually, a lot of these that I have written down have gone into a lot of... They, they've kind of been inclusive of a lot of the other ones that we've already spoken about before, like, you know, not picking up hobbies or, you know, trends just to Im impress someone. Uh, like I put down on this list, don't smoke cigarettes or cigars, don't do drugs uh, to impress. Uh, th then again, that being said, kids stay off drugs anyways uh drugs are bad okay yeah um <laughs> uh and you know don't be an ass to make yourself look like you're a badass i mean that that's i think pretty yeah. self-explanatory don't you when you try to make friends you gotta know your audience to be honest with you um mm -hmm. if you're not a badass don't be a badass if if you've got a bad attitude about life and that's just how you are, then do you. But if you're not, you know, like that, don't try to be like that. Don't try to be someone else. Don't try to be fake. Just be yourself. Be yourself and don't you don't have to come up with a gimmick. Right. I've said it I've said it a thousand times. The United States has become one giant pro wrestling show held in the world's largest shopping mall. Mm -hmm. Everybody is a character of themselves. Everything's a gimmick, and everything's for sale. 
Yep. Absolutely. And, you know, I wish we could just, you know, just look, just be who you are, dude. You know, uh, I mean, you you know, like, you don't have to like. Who knows who they are now? You know, these days. Yeah. Have we ever had. These days, kids don't have time to really self explore who they are, you know. Um, we have them running around doing so many things. Plus, school has gotten really intensive, too. Um, yeah, tell me about it. Uh, we've got kids in I remember. after school programs, sports. We've got them in extracurricular activities, karate classes, and martial arts. Um, you've got them in guitar lessons. Kids these days don't have the time to really sit and explore themselves to, you know, what do I want to do with my life? You yeah. know, it's, you know, and I'm dealing with this myself, you know, where, uh, you know, my girlfriend has her kids. You know, I mean, they're not my kids. They're, they're her kids, but I love them like they're my kids. Right. You know, you don't have to be blood to be family. Nope. And, uh, um, you know, I would take a bullet for them. That's, that's how much I love them. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm dealing with this of, you know, the kids are, they're in, they're, they're, uh, there's always a schedule for them. And especially right now, what's really screwed up for them is uh, how school is because everyone's doing school at home. Right. And on Zoom. And so, uh, I mean, on the surface, it looks great. I get them up at a quarter to, they have to be, they have to log in at 8 a.m. I get them up at a quarter to eight. Mm. You know, when I was going to school, the latest I would get up is 6.30 in the morning. Yeah. Usually it was earlier than that because I had to get to the bathroom before my sisters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they'd be in there forever, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, I, and so, I, you know, you get up at a quarter, quarter to eight, um, you know, they brush your teeth and uh, uh, make something for breakfast, and then they, they sit in front of, you know, the laptop and um, have uh, Zoom school. Yep. But uh, they're based. The, the, that sounds great on the surface. The problem is, is if they're not out in school socializing, learning how to deal with other people, right? Learning how to deal with rejection from other people, mm-hmm. um, and they don't have that free time away from home, right? You know, there is an escapist uh, mentality of, you know, well, you know, I got to deal with all. The, like when I come home, I got to do my homework. I got to do my chores. I got to, you know, listen to mom and dad talk about something that I don't really care about. Um, but because they're mom and dad, I have to sit there and listen to it. Yep. Um, and uh, then there's, uh, you know, you know, if you, know, you got to go to the eye doctor or the regular doctor or the dentist, you got to do all those things. And if you're if you're playing in sports, you got to go to practice and then games. And then, uh, you know, if, if uh, you got their kids, so a lot of people got their kids enrolled in tutor professional tutoring. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there's all this on the, the kids plate. Yep. You know, and it's uh, it's just it's so much. When do they have where, time to stop? When do they think? have? Yeah. When do they have time just to veg out? When do they have time just to sit there and daydream? Yeah. When do they have time? You know, that's why kids are so engulfed in uh, video games. Yep. You know, because it's really the only time they have to socialize because now you can play video games online with other, with people. other people. Yep. So I, I, I totally understand when I, I try to be very laid back, you know, as a father figure, because um, I'm at home with the kids when they're in school. And, uh, you know, I keep an eye on them. I make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do, but I'm not constantly up their ass. Right. You know, right. I give them their freedom. And mm-hmm. by doing that, uh, I, get, I'm, I get a lot of, uh, you know, in some cases, the kids... Uh, you know, I, the 15 year old and the 13 year olds, and one's a boy, one's a girl, so it's different. Yeah, obviously, you know, with my with uh, my 15 uh, year old stepson, he has become a lot more independent. Uh, to to where I don't even have to tell him to do his chores. He wants his phone. He wants his video game. So he'll get his chores done. Then he'll come to me and goes, "Is there anything else you need me to do?" You know, whereas the 13 year old, you're kind of chasing around going, you need to get this done. You need to do that. You need to, you know, she's 13. She's kind of dealing with the age of, you know, she's not a little girl anymore. She's become a teenager and she has to have more responsibilities. And, you know, so it's, uh, you know, it's still a big, big challenge. 
but I always try to recognize how hard it is on the kids. Mm. That's absolutely you know, just because right. our just because our lives are difficult because we got you know when they, they asked me what was my favorite thing about childhood was not paying bills. All right, <laughs> that was my favorite part of childhood. Yep. yep. You know, so yeah, our lives are harder. We have more stress. We have bills to pay. We have jobs to do. We have to make sure all these things are done. Schedules are followed. Yes, our lives are harder. So what? That doesn't mean that their lives aren't can't be difficult. Right. Exactly. And it is. It it is difficult on the kids. Um, you know, even here, like obviously with COVID, it's really screwed up everybody's school system. Mm -hmm. Here, at least, you know, our daughter she goes to school two days a week, um, and Monday, Wednesday, th uh, Friday she's at home doing Zoom schooling. Um, but at least she gets that twice a week she gets that outlet she gets that go to school and she'll get her hands on education there as well mm -hmm. but it allows her to socialize and to um, like you said learn how to cope and deal with other people on a daily basis um, where they that's can't the biggest thing that. about school is you need to learn how to deal with people yeah and you can't get that just from staying home and, and sitting around playing video games all day you know and no you just can't uh, it's like I, I try to tell my daughter to get out more and, um, you know, that there's so much more to life to, you know, really appreciate and explore than just video games. And people don't see, kids don't see that anymore because everything's mm -hmm. become technologized, 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 whatever you want to call it. Technology has taken over. Think, society. I just think you just made up a new word there, Chris. I think so. I think so. <laughs> That's going to be the word of the day. Technologize. Um, <laughs> so we actually we're coming up to the last five minutes now. We're going to go ahead and wrap things up here. Uh, Matt, anything you want to say in closing? Uh, what I would like to say is this has been an absolute pleasure, Chris. Absolutely. I look forward to more podcasts in the future. Um, you can uh, find me on. Instagram at Matt Sinister on TikTok at Matt Sinister and uh, also on YouTube, which hasn't been my channel. It hasn't been active for quite a while. Um, but now that I'm going to begin this uh, weight loss journey, um, I've just reached a point in my life where I'm just I'm tired of feeling this way. I'm heavier than I've ever been in my life. Mm. I've always struggled with weight, but I've learned so much in the last 10 years about nutrition and uh, uh, um, proper ways of working out. Right. But there's some, there's some things that I'm still not, uh, okay. I'm an old school guy, you know, hit the weights, do the cardio, drink a lot of protein. That was me. Yeah. You know, I've learned a lot since then, but I, I need help and I've gone out and found that help. I've hired a personal trainer and nutritionist and starting on Monday, I'm going to start beginning this journey, and I'm going to document it, uh, and it'll eventually be on my YouTube channel. Sick, bro. I can't wait, man. That's a big undertaking, and uh, I wish you all the best of luck. And, uh, Thank you. you know, I'll be here rooting for you, bud. So what are you, what are you going to be up to? Well, uh, we're going to be doing uh, some more coil building for some more orders that we've got come in. If you guys are interested, you guys know where to get a hold of me at Instagram, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, and Twitter as well. Uh, you guys know me, Lethal Coils. Um, yeah, if you guys are looking for coils, definitely hit me up there. Going to be building some more of those this week. Going to, uh, well, obviously, we're going to edit and uh, upload this podcast here uh, probably tomorrow. And get this up and running. And um, Awesome. Other than that, planning out the next episode, which I think we've already got a good jump on because we didn't get to half of the stuff that I wanted to today. So we'll uh, pick up that next week and we'll uh, do some more planning for the rest of the content. Um, aside from that, not a whole lot. Going to be unpacking and doing some more stuff here at the house. Um, but guys, you know where to get a hold of me at. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, I'm all over the place. And if you're not a fan or part of the discord family you guys will be able to get the link down below in the description here on youtube and uh yeah so that's what i've got coming up um anything else for shout outs that i want to do 
Uh, yeah, big shout out to my boy Mitch Hogat from Hogat's Yogits. Uh, makes really good juice, guys. If you don't know, now you know. Go check him out on Facebook. Um, that's Mitch Hogat. And um, yeah, that's all I've got. Today is what? Thursday? Wow, we've got I the vlog like... later. We got the Grim Green vlog, so tune into that. Yeah, we got the Grim Green vlog. I want to give some shout outs right now to uh, to the Vape Stew. And, uh, you know, uh, if you're, um, you're listening to us on YouTube, check out the Green Room every Fridays and the, uh, the Vape Stew. Uh, listen to the Shed Time podcast on uh, SoundCloud. ShedTimePodcast.com. Um, yes. Uh, these are a great, great bunch of guys, guys that I consider uh, all of them to be good friends. And they've become like my extended family. Mm -hmm. because I've learned so much from them. I've confided in them and I've got nothing but positivity from all of them. Absolutely. So I've, uh, I've come to love the, the family over there as well. And, uh, that is exactly what it's become. It's become a family of caring individuals that are always there for each other, but we love to have the, the fun and enjoyment of company as well. So we certainly mess with each other a lot too. <laughs> Hell yeah, we do. I mean, if we didn't pick on each other, it wouldn't mean that we liked each other, you know? Just a little little shout out to Poon Sauce McNasty. Yeah, yeah hell yeah. A little, <laughs> little shout out to Poon Sauce McNasty. Uh, he's actually doing big things now, too. He started up his uh, beer review stuff. Yeah, I've been watching it. It's good. Yeah. He's uh, doing pretty well there. So, actually, let's give big love to Mr. Poon Sauce McNasty uh, and the entire Vape Stew crew as well as uh, you know all the different communities that I'm a part of, Vaping Misfits, Break the Stigma uh, with Unity. Um, that would be Tim and Advocate for Liberty's channel. and uh, uh, great, Another great guy. Yep. Guy who's always been there for me. Absolutely. You know, a guy we barely, we, you know, barely knew each other, and yet uh, he's always reached out. He's known the type of year I, I've had. 2020 was not, 2020 wasn't a good year period, but I had a lot of things. I got injured at work. I wound up on disability. My dog died. Then my father died. You know, uh, just yeah. 2020 was a was a terrible year. Big hit. But 2021 is going to be. I'm going to make sure it's not. And there's none of this new me, new year, uh, new year, new me BS. That's yep. all. But that's all work. Uh, when people say that, but for me, uh, I'm going to make sure that 2020, no matter what obstacles get in my way. No matter what crosses my path, Matt Sinister is going to make 2021 his year. Hell yes. Mark my words. Hell yes. I will mark those words. I will. And we'll see We'll see what you do with those words. I know you're going to come out on top anyways. You got this, bro. Oh, yes. Um, so that's going to do it for us, guys. This has been the Cloudy Days Calm Nights podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, and we look forward to talking to you guys again on the next one so until then stay safe stay happy stay healthy stay the hell inside keep vaping and keep fighting for your right to vape because if you don't who will love y'all from me lethal coils and my boy matt sinister peace why am i waving i don't know why i'm waving <laughs>